Listen to the hot dog. Hello and welcome to This Date in History, a.k.a. TDH, your daily source of interesting and important events I consider enough to be worth sharing. Of course, there are far more events that have happened, and I encourage you to seek those out as well, for everything and everyone matters. It is all connected. Today is Tears Day, a.k.a. Tuesday, June 22nd, 2021. The music you are hearing in the background is Memory by Electronomia and Rudd. A link to that, as well as any other sources of videos and articles, are in the video description. Anyway, on with the show! In 168 BC, Macedonian King Perseus surrendered to Lucius Amelius Pallas and his Romans after the Battle of Pinda, bringing an end to the Third Macedonian War. This conflict, lasting about three years, was provoked by the Macedonians after Perseus himself spread anti-Roman feelings around Macedonia after the death of his father, King Philip V. By the end, Rome gained 150,000 enslaved Epirus. Moving forward well over 1,500 years, in 1633, after a heated controversy, the Holy Office in Rome forced Galileo Galilei to recant his view that the Sun, not the Earth, is the center of the universe in the form he presented it in. Due to the Church, most people at the time believed false facts. This was because at the time the Church was the government. Their word was law, and to challenge that could result in excommunication or execution. Moving on up slightly over 200 years, in 1839, after having signed the Treaty of New Ecota, which resulted in the Trail of Tears, Cherokee leaders Major Ridge, John Ridge, and Elias Bonnot were assassinated. The treaty was signed in Georgia on December 29, 1835, and was witnessed by U.S. government officials and 500 Cherokee Indians, who were representatives of their 16,000-member tribe. The ultimate goal was to gain land east of the Mississippi River for continued U.S. expansion, causing the displacement and ultimate death of many of the natives who were there. In 1870, United States Congress created the U.S. Department of Justice. This all started back when the Judiciary Act of 1789 established the Office of the Attorney General. The motto of this department is the Latin phrase qui pro domina justicita sequitur meaning who prosecuted on behalf of justice. Since the start to now, 85 people have served as the Attorney General. In 1941, Nazi Germany initiated Operation Barbarossa during World War II, invading the Soviet Union. This was due to the fact that Hitler and others were concerned about the Soviets invading them first. And this is possibly a response to Russia's taking of the Baltic states of Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, the cause of which is very much akin to Germany's reason. Ultimately, this assault would not only be unsuccessful, but is one of the, if not leading cause, of Germany's defeat. One would think a country would have learned from the past to not open a second front, especially if their leader served in the first global engagement, but hey, insanity is a powerful thing. One year later, in 1942, United States Congress formally adopted the Pledge of Allegiance. Having already went through altercations, the first one lasting from 1892 to 1923, and the current one having lasted since 1954, as I said a few episodes ago, the addition of Under God is under threat of being removed, meaning we are currently living in a time where it may change yet again. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Also in 1942, following the Axis capture of Tobruk, Erwin Rommel was promoted to Field Marshal. He would later become known as the Desert Fox, rivaled only by U.S. General George S. Patton during the Africa Campaign. Later, Rama would help bolster the Atlantic Wall, adding obstacles, minefields, gun emplacements of every kind, and many other forms of defense along the 6,200-kilometer coastline from southern France to beyond Norway. In 1948, around half a year after British surrendered rule of India, King George VI formally gave up the title Emperor of India. 
Located in South Asia, India is the second most populated country in the world and seventh largest by area. Its 1.32 billion inhabitants primarily practice the polytheistic religion of Hinduism and, due to its politics, is the world's largest democracy, as well as a very industrialized nation and has the potential to take the place of the United States as far as a global superpower if history repeats itself beyond the similarities we already have between now and the 1930s and 40s. A few decades later, in 1969, drawing national attention to water pollution, the Cuyahoga River in Cleveland, Ohio, caught fire, spurring the passing of the Clean Water Act and eventual creation of the Environmental Protection Agency. This was not the first time the body of water combusted, however, with the most potent blaze having taken place 17 years prior in 1952, causing over $1.3 million in damages. And in 1978, James W. Christie, stationed at the United States Naval Observatory, became the first person to discover Charon, the first of Pluto satellites to be documented. At half the size of its host planet, it is the largest known moon relative to the host planet's size. Due to this, Pluto and Charon are sometimes considered as a double dwarf planet system, which is just anti-Plutonian propaganda perpetuated by the man. Pluto's a planet! First, Richard Gurlev Drew, 1899, John Dillinger, 1903, Conrad Zeus, 1910, Brit Hume, 1943, Meryl Strip, 1949, Des, Fred Astaire, 1987, George Carlin, 2008. And that concludes today's episode. Once again, I encourage you to invest more time in history. You never know what may have happened in the past unless you find it yourself. Until tomorrow, be safe and keep an open mind!